Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report <clears throat> podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. Richie, we've alluded to this commitment all week, and maybe even longer than that. Uh, St. Anthony's four-star wide receiver out of Long Island, Corey Duff, committed to Rutgers today. Uh, this was a guy the staff prioritized as one of their top targets in the class, their first four-star of the class, a huge, huge-bodied receiver. I think he's listed at 6'4", like 210. Uh, he's kind of got the size to play tight end if he if he ends up developing into one. He's also got the size to be a really big body receiver. Mm -hmm. He's got good speed, good hands. He high points the ball well. I, I really like this kid. Tell us a little bit about Corey Duff and how this commitment came together. I mean, you, you said it all. <laughs> good good speed, <laughs> good hands, um, good route runner. Has really good range, really sticky hands. Um, we got to see that up close and personal at the Rivals camp this past May. Um where he actually won the top wide receiver slash tight end award. I don't agree that we have the same award for both, but um, we do. So uh, mm -hmm. it is what it is. He made defenders miss, gave quarterbacks really easy targets to throw to. And he's tall, and he, he can high point the shit out of the ball. So, like, he just is a great overall receiver. Now, it's the thing that um, is interesting. He's probably not going to be a great blocker, blocker early on, at least, because he's of his size. At, uh, yeah. Because of his size alone. There we go. Got it out. Um, he's only 6'5", like around 207. Um, that's the official height and weight from from Rivals Camp where we, we do all that good stuff. Um, but, yeah, so he's going to be a major receiving threat for Rutgers. He's going to be all for them a receiving threat at tight end, which they probably haven't had, which I, I think I said this last pod. They haven't had since probably Tyler Croft, to be honest with you. Um, they haven't had a legit receiver at tight end in a long, long time. Um, and this guy is going to make a difference there. Um, or I should say he's going to start out at receiver. But I do think eventually when he packs on 25, 30 pounds, like you, you're going to run around with a 6'5", 240, 250 receiver. Uh, I personally know, but he, he's <laughs> like the new age tight end where you could probably line him up just about anywhere. Um, he's a great prototypical receiving tight end that everyone loves and wants nowadays. I know Kirk is very, Kirk Schrocker is very excited about this one. He's been recruiting the hell out of him all the time, all for a long time now. And um, this is uh, this is the first four star of the class. This is a very good get. He's ranked number eighteen overall tight end for our rankings. Where does that go in terms of receivers? I can't even tell you. That's a hard one to to kind of figure out. But number one kid in the state of New York. And if you told me a year ago Rutgers is going to get the number one kid in New York, I would have told you fact. I would have also told you it was someone else. I would have actually named two other names before I named Corey Duff, but. His offseason has been that good. He's dominated OT7 um, regionals down in, down in Florida to the point where he got flown out again for OT7 finals for um, Miami Raw 7-on-7 seven -seven football team. And I, I don't know if they ended up winning or not, but he was one of the best players out there by far in terms of 7-on-7 seven -seven comps. Um, and he just dominated the camp circuit in general. He looked really good at uh, Under Armour, working with uh, AJ Serace at the time. I know those two were bonding quite a bit when I was, I was just watching them and um, they were just talking quite a bit on the field. And then they came, he came to rivals camp and dominated. He dominated the seven of seven circuit um, up here and down there. He was just a really, really good player this off season. He'll have to add weight, which is fine, but damn, this is a good get for Rutgers. Like this is huge for them in terms of uh, rebuilding this offense. Yeah, absolutely. They have that, that anchor receiver that they can then use for, for years to come. Um, and obviously, he's a huge name in the New York uh, football community. Everybody knows who Corey Duff mm -hmm. is. Do you think us landing Corey Duff will uh, help in their recruiting efforts, both in the class of 24 and beyond? Yeah, I think um, it definitely doesn't hurt. I know he's pretty close with Ian Strong, who's already on campus and honestly one of the better receivers on, on the team currently. Yep. Um, actually came in as a safety, but moved to wide receiver. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of New York in general, it definitely helps just to keep building those bonds. Um, I know he's pretty close with Josiah Brown. He actually told us on, on quotes, um, that he's going to continue to recruit Josiah Brown, no matter what, which, which adds up. Like if you could get him on to flip, that'd be nice. But, um, sounds like that's going to be a little bit tougher one. He's, uh, he's going to continue to recruit other guys. He also said, mentioned Kaj Sanders as a guy he's recruiting Josh Philistine, a cornerback out of Florida and Kevin Levy uh another uh athlete out of florida as well so those are just a couple names he's got his eyes on right now um but yeah i think in terms of new york i think this definitely helps um what who else do they have they're they're close with Caden brown um missing someone else who they have someone else from new york don't they 
Am I forgetting? I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Oh, Aris Batia. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're continuing to do well in New York. Um, and New York getting more and more talented. Like, they have a kid committed to Georgia. And this kid in Corey Duff's above ranked above him. So, kid committed to Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan State, another Minnesota. Like, this is – New York's getting better and better each year. So, for Rutgers to continue to build those relationships and those bonds is huge, especially when – I believe the 2025 class for New York is going to have at least like 10 to 15 uh, power five prospects again. So it's a good get and uh, good to keep building that foundation over there. The state of Rutgers. The state of Rutgers uh, continues to bear fruit, even if it's not directly from the state of New Jersey. Um, this is a kid that you kind of have to land. You have to land like we <clears> talked <throat> about when we were talking about landing one or two Moses Walker type recruits a year. This is one or two of those types of recruits. This is, mm-hmm top kid in the, in the state of New York who had interest from places all over the country. He probably could have went to most schools if he, if he really wanted to, um, yeah. probably could have camped and gotten a lot way more offers than he had. Um, but huge pickup, uh, is this the type of kid who is shutting things down hundred percent at this point? Yes and no. That's where it's a little difficult. So the quote he gave our national analyst, he basically said, um, I'm all Rutgers, but also, and he also mentioned some schools that were still reaching out despite his commitment. Like I, most of these schools know about the commitments beforehand. Yep. Oregon's reaching out. Auburn just reached out last week. Florida State's still kind of like here and there, giving them some info. Miami's still building that relationship and still making or keeping that bond strong. Although it sounds like he wasn't a take for them currently. Could be down the line. I know he was supposed to visit there last weekend, but canceled the trip. Um, which is whatever. So maybe Miami might just be out. Got to keep an eye on Auburn. I think Auburn's the interesting one. It's SEC football. It's hard to turn down at the end of the day, especially when they're probably going to throw a bag at you in some aspect. Um, and I, it's just Auburn's always a slimy program too, which there's, I don't think there's any secret about that. Um, so n- yes, he said he's shutting it down. Yes, he named kids he's going to recruit. But he basically also said, he's like, I'm always going to hear people out and hear what they have to say. And kind of said, potentially, I could take a visit, but I don't think anything. No, I'm not doing anything right now. So it's going to be a, a battle till the very end. And he's that good of a prospect that he might be one of those kids that Craig might just say, hey, take the visit. Just come back and we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards. We're not going to just drop you flat out like like other kids in the in the past. But. There, there is no visit rule for Rutgers, so we'll wait and see what happens there. But I think right now, very good get for Rutgers. Just got to stay on top of them, stay on them. And the fact that you have Ian Strong, who's a close friend of his on campus, Dylan Braithwaite, a close friend on campus, definitely help uh, help get him to sign in Rutgers' favor. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to hit on before we head out here? There's a little bit of a short one today. Um, I think Rutgers with that addition probably goes to around, if I'm doing the math correctly, they're around like 15th in the country. So mind you, um, they definitely have more commitments than most. Actually, they actually don't. Um, a lot of kids, a lot of schools have like 15 plus commitments. Um, the top four have 24, 21, 21. There's a 26 commitment class in Stanford. Um, so Rutgers has a pretty good shot of, uh, of getting a top 15 class and, they're not done yet. That's the crazy part is they're still recruiting. They're still recruiting defensive linemen, actually. Um, keep a close eye on Mason Carter. Caden Brown's going to be a guy to keep an eye on down the line. Um, just trying to look at the recruiting board right now. There's They want another receiver. Um, Kevin Levy would be one to keep an eye on down in Florida. They're still pushing. He took an official visit. Um, Josh Philistine's probably their top corner prospect at the moment, minus Jamari Howard and Xavier Lucas, who are both four stars. But it sounds like those two are going to go elsewhere. Um, Kosh Sanders is set to decide July 8th. So I want to keep an eye on him. Uh, he's going to decide between sounds like South Carolina, Rutgers, North Carolina, and Wisconsin. Although it sounds like Wisconsin was too far for his, to his family's liking. Um, and, uh, Kosh, and he's going to choose between North Carolina and Rutgers. So wait and see what happens there. But, uh, yeah, that's all we really got today, guys. Um, Mike had to go. Mike left uh, left me in the dust a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, we'll wrap it up from here. And uh, it's another edition of the, the Night Report podcast. Signing off.